The trial of Dominic Ongwen at the International Criminal Court is set to start on 6th December 2016 in The Hague. This is the first ICC trial related to situation in Uganda. The ICC is the first ever permanent international court with jurisdiction to prosecute individuals responsible for the most serious crimes of international concern, genocide, crimes against humanity, and war crimes. It is based in the Netherlands, in The Hague. The Office of the Prosecutor is currently conducting investigations in nine different countries, Uganda, the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the Central African Republic, Darfur, Sudan, Kenya, Libya, Cote d'Ivoire, Georgia, and Mali. In December 2003, Uganda referred the situation to the ICC prosecutor. It was the first situation referred to the International Criminal Court. So far, five warrants of arrest have been issued for top members of the Lord's Resistance Army. Joseph Kony, Vincent Oti, Raska Lukwia, Okot Odiambo, and Dominic Ongwen. Raska Lukwia and Okot Odiambo passed away and proceedings against them were terminated. Joseph Kony and Vincent Oti, suspected of war crimes and crimes against humanity, are still at large. Dominic Ongwen, alleged brigade commander of the Senior Brigade of the Lord's Resistance Army, or LRA, is accused of war crimes and crimes against humanity committed during attacks against the civilian population in Lukodi, Pajule, Odek, and Abok IDP camps between October 2003 and June 2004. Murder and attempted murder, rape, sexual slavery, torture, cruel treatment and other inhumane acts, enslavement, outrage upon personal dignity, the conscription and use of children under the age of 15 to participate actively in hostilities, pillaging, destruction of property, and persecution. Further, the prosecution alleges that from at least 1st July 2002 until 31st December 2005, Dominic Ongwen, Joseph Kony, and other senior brigade commanders were part of a common plan to abduct women and girls in northern Uganda that were then used as forced wives and sex slaves, tortured, raped, and made to serve as domestic help, and to conscript and use children under the age of 15 to participate actively in hostilities. After the confirmation of charges hearing, the pretrial chamber in this case confirmed the 70 charges brought by the prosecutor and committed the case to trial. Dominic Ongwen has been in ICC custody since 21st January 2015. ICC proceedings are governed by the Rome Statute and all legal texts that were adopted by the state parties. The three judges constituting the trial chamber in this case are presiding judge, Bertram Smith, Judge Peter Kovacs, and Judge Raoul Pangalangan. They are responsible for conducting fair and expeditious proceedings with full respect for the rights of the accused and the protection of victims and witnesses. Throughout the trial, they will guide the proceedings, ensuring that the laws are respected at all times, and in the end, will decide based on the evidence presented if the accused person is innocent or guilty of the crimes with which he is charged. At the beginning of the trial, there will be opening statements by the Office of the Prosecutor, the defense team, and the legal representatives of victims. Then, the prosecutor will be the first to present its case. Like in national proceedings, the role of the ICC prosecution is to seek justice in the public interest so that crimes don't go unpunished. Our role is to convince the judges that the accused person has committed the crimes as charged. To achieve that goal, we have to demonstrate that every charge or alleged crime is supported by credible, reliable, and trustworthy evidence. 
we are presenting evidence and calling witnesses who can confirm the alleged facts and circumstances of the commission of the alleged crimes. That is the role of the prosecution and that's the role that we will have in the trial of Dominic Ongwen. Each witness will be examined first by the prosecution and then cross-examined by the defense team. The legal representatives of victims, with the permission of the judges, may also ask questions to the witnesses. Judges can question witnesses at any time. The accused is presumed innocent and has the right to conduct his defense in person or through counsel. Mr. Ongun is represented by a defense team led by defense counsel, Mr. Crispus Ayena Odongo. The role of defense counsel is to make sure that um, if it were possible, all the charges that are brought against the witness, I mean, against the suspect, against our client, are dropped on account that the evidence and um, statements presented to support the case or the charges brought against the suspect have not been substantiated. The defense is conducting its own investigations and has the right to examine prosecution witnesses, to present its case and its witnesses, and to present documents, videos, photographs, maps, and any other material as evidence. After the prosecution calls all their witnesses and presents all the evidence, the defense team will have the opportunity to present their case to the judges. Victims can present their views and concerns directly to the judges through their legal representatives. Lawyers representing victims will be present in the courtroom throughout the proceedings. A total of 4,115 victims are participating in this case. 2,603 victims are represented by Joseph Manoba and Francisco Cox, and 1,512 victims are represented by Paulina Masida, Principal Counsel at the Office of the Public Counsel for Victims. Legal representative of victims are lawyers who are representing, as any other lawyers, the interests of their clients in the proceedings. The role of a legal representative is a peculiar one because legal representatives are mainly the voice of the victims in courtroom. They explain to the judges which are the views and the concerns of the victims, and they can do so because they have a link, they have a contact with the victims, and they can collect their views and concerns uh, regularly and therefore present these views and concerns before the judges. All proceedings are public, but judges can decide to hold some proceedings in closed session to protect confidential or sensitive information. At the end of the trial, the judges will issue a decision to either acquit or convict the accused. If the accused is convicted, the trial chamber can sentence him to up to 30 years in prison, or if justified, by the extreme gravity of the crime and the individual circumstances, life imprisonment. Judges may also order reparations to victims. Thank you.